Did you hear that? Amanda, we need to turn up the volume. Let's try this again. What's good everybody? It's your main girl Mel. I've said it before and I'll say it once more. The bigger the hair, the harder they stare. I caught you, okay? And today, I'm gonna help you. Throughout this video, we're gonna be talking about all things volumizing. I'm here to help you navigate what products to use, including my top recommendations. I'll be demonstrating different styling methods. I'll share different tools that you can use to your advantage. And for a bonus, I'm gonna throw in some sleep and maintenance tips. So buckle in, everyone is welcome. These hair tips are for wavy, curly, and even coily hair types. So if you want to know the tips of the pros, keep watching this video. Why am I? I just feel like I look like a freaking bobblehead. Now I'm actually going to be taking you through my whole volume routine. So together we'll be styling. And to start, we're going to focus on products. First and foremost, if this one isn't obvious to you, then I think it's time to shampoo. Not once, but two. Your hair just cannot be voluminous if it's being weighed down by oils and dirts and debris caught in your hair. And if you're only washing your hair about once a week, then make sure you are using a clarifying shampoo. And alternatively, if you have very flat roots and hair dryness isn't really a problem for you, then volumizing shampoos and conditioners actually do help to plump up the strands. Just make sure you are cleansing. That is the first step of prep. Then on your wet hair, which you may need to dampen down, there are a variety of products that you can apply. Now typically, some of these need to be activated by heat. And so if you are someone that does a lot of blow drying, the thickening tonic is a fabulous option. And it's easy because it's a spray. That being said, this is not a heat protectant, so be aware of that. The product I'm actually gonna apply today for this routine is from the Inky List. It's their Peptide Volumizing Hair Treatment. This is the most affordable option that I'm sharing with you today. And I wanna share with you how effective it still is and can be on a budget. It's just a very, very liquidy product, which you can apply evenly throughout your hair. You want to be thorough with your volumizing treatments, or if you're looking to just really emphasize the volume in the root area, then you can also go ahead and spot treat. This particular product is best for fine to maybe medium hair textures, but if you have a coarser hair texture, the AG Plastique, this is their extreme volumizer. I'll show you what she looks like. Whoa! It gets me every time. Um, they're both very liquidy, but this one is a little bit more, as you can see, gooey, and it's better for thicker, coarser hair. That is all over me. I'm so silly. <laughs> the key is not to apply too many products to your hair, but being thorough that whatever product you did apply to your hair is all over. I am going to wastefully wipe this away now and probably cry about it later. Finally, an option that's great for all hair types, except maybe low porosity, is the Matrix Volume Booster with organic aloe and rice water. I say that if you have low porosity, you might want to be wary about using this product. And that's only if you have an issue with using aloe-based products. Aloe leaf juice is the first ingredient in this product. And it definitely gives your hair this almost seaweedy kind of feel. But what's really nice about it is that it is very hydrating. It's nice and lightly volumizing. Otherwise, it can be used on pretty much all curl types. And you can use it on its own or mix it into some of your other stylers. Stylers that would ideally be water-based. This is a classic. This is the Curl Keeper Original Liquid Styler. It's a very liquidy product. So there's no oils or butters in here, which means it's very lightweight, especially on very fine hair. And it being very liquidy as well makes it very easy to apply without having to be too heavy handed. So this is what I'm using today. I'm going to thoroughly distribute this throughout my hair. Beautiful, beautiful. Now I do want to point out that this is a protein free product and protein in your product, especially if you have damaged color treated hair, is a great way to add extra bounce and volume to your hair. And if you put those in a foam, then you have got, I mean, you've got, you're gonna have great hair. This is the Curlsmith Bouncy Strength Volume Foam. And you can apply this to your wet hair after you've styled and put in any creams, if that's what you're using. Or I would recommend putting it in beforehand. So prep your hair with some pumps of this. Foams are typically more lightweight than mousses. A mousse in an aerosol can can still be heavy. It can be great for volumizing. But you might have to be aware if you have really fine hair. Typically, foams in a pump bottle are more water-based, which means they are going to be, again, lighter weight. The perfect recipe for volumizing. Now, you most certainly would not use all of these products in one routine, but no matter what you are using, make sure that you are distributing it thoroughly throughout your hair from roots to tips. 
And now, let's get into some styling methods. Now, as you get familiar with your curl pattern, everyone develops a preference on how they like to define the curls in its wet stage. Some people prefer to just use their fingers, maybe some twisting. Some people prefer to do brush styling. It doesn't matter what you choose, just as long as you are making sure that you are separating the hair so that not too much of it is clumping together, which will make your volume look less voluminous, and that you are brushing up and out to get more lift and volume in your roots. There are two different ways that you can separate the hair. You can work with vertical lines along your head. This is my preferred method. I find it gives a lot more movement throughout the hair, and it tends to work better if you have a lot of different layers throughout the hair. And over on the other side of my hair, I'm demonstrating horizontal partings. I personally don't find these as easy to do, but you might like these results better for you if you have more one length hair or just very long layering. The main rule of thumb here is that you're not brushing downwards, you're always brushing up and out. You'll see what the results of both sides look like in a minute. But as for your top section, let's get into volumizing hair. The most challenging part is if you have very strong partings. Now the philosophy of styling the top of your head is rooted with the same rules. We're styling the hair up, letting it fall back, especially towards the crown. If your hair gets very flat at the crown very easily, then you wanna make sure that you are brushing up and off of the scalp. And as I move from the back of the crown to the front hairline, I am alternating from left to right of my head. I am taking diagonal sections and almost creating a herringbone pattern throughout the top of my head. This will allow for maximum movement where you'll be allowed to flip your hair from side to side without committing and without seeing too many partings. It falls the most naturally. And as you can see, when you reach the front hairline, you are left with the triangle section that is at your bangs where you may be struggling with a parting. So here's what you do no matter if you have a side part or a middle part. First, you want to confuse your roots, make sure that the hair is really wet and then brush from side to side, up and down. This will kind of reset that area so that it doesn't fall into its natural part. And then to finish styling this section, you're gonna take your next diagonal parting right through your natural part. That's it, on the perpendicular, keep on going with the same movements we've been doing, brushing up and off the scalp, bringing it back until she is complete. So now that that's all styled, you can already see there's a lot of movement and a lot of space for the curls to flourish in the roots already. Now another trick that you can do to create more separation and avoid too much clumping in the hair that you have to do while it is still wet is take a wide tooth comb and just comb through those clumps very gently. Just one pass through each section. That'll help to break things up and turn up that volume. But there are a few more tools that we can use. We're ready to move into the next phase of styling, which is through the drying. And there are many different tools that we can use to amp things up. This is called the Obonachi by Curly Life. It's very similar in design to pinup curl contraption devices. Brushes, if that's what you could call this, were used in the 40s to create victory curls and pinup looks. So you know this is going to be great for creating very vintage looks. And in particular, this root volumizer works really well in wavy to curly hair. Now, another method is clipping your roots. I'm not particularly a fan of this, especially if you are using these two prong clips. I find that they can get caught in the hair very easily and then create breakage at the roots. Instead, use claw clips. I really like these ones from Curl Keeper because I feel like they allow enough space for the curl to curl up without crushing them and without combing them too much. Like there's a lot of space between these prongs. But realistically, you can do this with any jaw claw clip. What's nice about this is even if you are air drying your hair, it will lift and remove too much weight off of the hair at your scalp to prevent it from stretching out and keep a very lifted look at the root. So with these in, you can air dry or diffuse. This tool is very helpful for creating volume in curly hair because it allows you to quickly dry the hair as well as dry in a scrunched up position to really encourage bounce. If you're going to use this scrunching method, make sure that you hold for a few seconds before moving on to the next section. Use medium to low heat to minimize damage and don't rush the process, just trust the process. Taking just a little bit of time to do this will help your hair have a lot more bounce to it. Now, if you put these things in your hair while it was wet, 
I do recommend removing them before your hair is completely dry just to make sure if there are any weird kinks in the hair uh -huh, that they don't set in place too uh, aggressively. And now I can go ahead and finish drying either air drying or diffusing since most of the moisture and the excess weight of water in my hair has been removed. But on the flip side, you can apply these to your hair once it's about 80 to 90% dry to lift the roots and then put the volume in then. So you have a couple options. You have several options. Another option, and this one can work really well on coilier hair, is to take a couple of picks and shove it, interlocking them to help really lift the root. I'm just using these picks as a demonstration, but there are better tools to use those. Although I do love these picks. These are the spriggles. I like that they are very spacious, especially for waves and curls. So you don't, you know, break up too much of the definition at the root. Now this is where I'm already at and I haven't even done any fluffing or scrunching. I pretty much always finish off my hair routines with an oil or serum. I prefer one with some silicone just to help kind of lock in all of that hydration. And this one, the ghost oil, is a very light weight. However, if your hair is already very silky, it falls very easily. Oils are emollient and so that silkiness will not necessarily help with your volume. So... See what I'm doing here? You can just scrunch and shake what your mama gave you, your fingers, without any oils. Now, while we're on the topic of picks, we know how to use them because we've seen them demonstrated on curly and coily hair by fluffing out from the root. But if you do have more wavy hair, instead of brushing out, which could stretch out the root area, you almost want to back comb. So lift the section, and comb back towards the scalp. And if your roots are really silky up there and they get oily fast, then use a texturizing product, like a texture spray or a volumizing powder, because this will help to add some grit to the hair to really hold that look in place. This technique where I'm holding up the hair and then slowly releasing the curls strand by strand while I spray the texturizing product is referred to as butterflying and it's really gonna help to set in that separation and sort of PC texture. This is the Bumble and Bumble Dry Spun Texture Spray. And this right here would be the complete wash day, not a scalp in sight. I can flip my hair wherever I like, and I will let you decide which side has more volume from what styling. If you're seeing what I'm seeing, there's a lot more volume for all of the layering that I have with the vertical parting. So quick little side by side for you. You choose what you need to do to achieve your desired finished look. Now I do need a better haircut with more layers in the back, but all of these techniques help me to achieve this long lasting volume that if I would like to keep when I go to sleep, I'm going to use one of these comb clips. Okay, and this is a bonus tip. This is something that I discovered a few weeks ago and we've been obsessed. Give your hair a flip and gather the hair at your crown. Then you're gonna take one of these comb clips and shove it right up against your scalp. Then slip on your sleep cap, your scarf, the bonnet that you wear to bed. And this will absolutely help keep your hair at the crown lifted. Furthermore, throughout the week, don't be afraid to use things like dry shampoo if your hair gets oily. The Living Proof Perfect Hair Day Advanced Clean Dry Shampoo is currently my favorite. And or go ahead with more of your texture spray or volumizing powders. I love this for creating updos and styles like that. They will make your hair feel like crap. I'm kidding, but they do add this grittiness to it to create texture and lift and hold with the volume. But listen, these are just the steps that we have to take if we want to live with bigger and better hair days. And the best part is none of these curls come at the cost of sacrificing curl definition. Now, if you would like to learn some more hair tips from me, then make sure you subscribe to this channel. I am a professional and I am here for you and all your hair's needs. So if you have any comments, please drop them in the comment section below. Let me know what else you would like to see next and give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. All of my product recommendations that I used today will be linked in the description box so you can check those out there as well. Once again, this has been your main girl Mel and I am out. Peace. Oh. I look fine. <laughs> <laughs>
And the scarf is cute, right? <laughs> I don't need luck. Luck is for losers. Resume. Okay. And begin. We lost track of time. Kidding, actually, we got sidetracked and... Highly inappropriate lyrics were trying to emerge. Get back to where we were. I would put earrings on, but you really can't even see them. You won't even be able to see them. So just imagine that they're in there. Really? What was that? Stop calling, stop calling. I don't want to talk anymore. Out of my head and my heart on the dead. Why am I having a Gaga moment? I think she's super poofy in the best way. Yeah? Come and eat. I'm coming.